Hey guys, what's up? Brent Calmer from Blue Water VST. Thanks for joining me for this video. This time it's all about bringing Reactor into the world of machine and specifically using some of the stellar effects that Reactor has on offer with the creative routing capabilities that we have inside machine. Basically what we're going to do here is create a separate effects track and then we are going to load a series of Reactor effects into it and then explore different ways of sending machine sounds to those effects. It's a really powerful way of processing sounds. So first things first, we're going to get going with setting up our effects rack. Now inside machine, I have set up a basic drum and bass groove to serve as the starting point for our explorations. And it sounds like this. So it's quite simple. It consists of two groups in machine. One that is hosting the beats as you can see here from the individual hits, and then the second which is hosting Razor, which is playing the bass line. Now in group C, I'm going to double click here and rename this FX. And then our first order of business is to come over here to slot one and go to this downward facing arrow. And what we're going to do here is we're going to tell machine that instead of having this play a sample, we want this to accept audio from some other part of machine. So to do this, I can click on the downward facing arrow and go input. And now this is set up to receive audio from somewhere else. And now in the second slot, I can come in here and click on the downward facing arrow and then go to plugins. And this is assuming that you have uh, Reactor 5 installed. Uh, select Reactor 5 FX VST. And then we will have an empty instance of Reactor loaded in the second slot of this uh, sound. Now the thing to do next is to make as many copies of this as you want to use because uh, once we get things loaded into Reactor, we're probably not going to want to copy that same effect over and over. So let's just uh, hold down Option and drag this down and we'll do the same thing here. And once again, uh, say we'll set up four of these. And now each one of these has an empty instance of Reactor on it. And now the next step is to load our various effects onto these inputs. Great, so now we're ready to add some effects. Now first off, you wanna make sure that the sound tab rather than the group or master tabs is selected. And then you also wanna make sure that you have the number of the sound selected to which you, you want to add the effect. And then if I come up here to this box that shows the reactor logo, you'll see this edit button pops up when I have my mouse cursor in this area. If I click on that, it will bring up an empty instance of reactor and then I can put whatever uh, effect I like in. So you know, under Electronic Instruments Volume 1, I may select Anima, which is a nice polyphony dependent filter bank. Uh, double click on that, and you see it pops right up. And then I'm going to click on this magnifying glass to minimize the, the uh, side pane so I can have this interface up here without taking up too much space. Then I'm going to uh, double click on the sound label, and I'm going to label this Anima. And then for the second sound, I may wish to put in a distortion unit. So let's put in NFX distortion. I'm going to do the same thing with the side pane. Drag this down a little bit lower just so that we can switch between these. Uh, and then let's see, label this DIST. Oops. And then I might want to go a little bit deeper and this time use something like Lurker, for example, which is another creative delay effect. This one is really wild as some of you have experienced. And I'll drag this down here. The thing with Lurker is that it has an internal and an external uh, external input. So I'm gonna bring up this external input. Now one thing you notice as I do that, uh, one of the parameters on the interface matched what I was doing because it's already mapped. Some of these, uh, or uh, almost all of the uh, ensembles are mapped to some degree with uh, pre-existing mappings for machines. So, and you can tweak these and uh, move through the, the different pages and put in your own mappings if you want to do that. So that's very handy. And now I have these set up. I'm, I have to label this before I go any further. I have to practice what I preach here. And then I can come up and start finding different ways of sending uh, sounds to these effects. So let's do that now. And now for the fun part, it's time to send some audio to these effects. So let's go up to group A and with my group tab selected and my out sub tab selected, I see that I have a variety of options in terms of where I'm sending the main output, but also for uh, auxiliaries one and two, these are send effects. What's brilliant about these is that they allow us to mix an affected signal with a dry signal. 
And this gives you a great range of, of sounds because you're not just affecting the entirety of the signal, you can mix in affected signal with the dry signal. So what do I mean by this? Well, let's come to the chooser here and click on it. This will give us uh, our, uh, our options in terms of where we're sending this. We can send it nowhere, we can send it to the master, uh, we can send it, of course, voila, to our effects that we've just set up. And so we're going to do this, and we are going to click on Anima to start. I'm going to bring this level down, and then I'm going to go down to Anima and uh, select a snapshot that I like. It's this BH6. gives you this kind of nice rising filtered sound. Uh, and let's go back up to the Beats track, and I'm going to zero this out just so you can hear it dry. And then I'm going to bring in anima and you will hear the affected signal start to mix in with the dry signal. Here we go. There's a kind of nice rising effect that you get there. But it can be as subtle or as dramatic as you like it to be. And then of course you could also come next door if you wanted to add a little bit of crunch to your sound and send some audio to this distortion. Now once again I want to bring this down and get this back in the mix slowly. So I might just want to add a very subtle crunch to that. Now I know you're wondering what that lurker unit sounds like so let's uh, take the effect off of this or take the routing out of there and go back to our auxiliary one and select Lurker and then I'm going to bring this down. Now Lurker is capable of producing some really wild creative delay effects. We get this up. Listen to that. And that is Lurker with the uh, sample and hold classic snapshot. really wild stuff. So as you can see the possibilities here are endless. You could you could uh, stack up 16 effects here but you could do something else which is chain these, right? If you wanted Lurker on one uh, slot and you wanted to put something else on another, uh, a delay or something, I can't imagine you want another delay, but you might want a reverb or something else. Uh, you might want to have multiple effects inside Reactor and then load it onto one of these slots. So again the possibilities are limitless. Uh, this is great for something like Twisted Tools Rolodex, which gives you a lot of uh, percussive slicing and dicing that you can mix with the dry signal. So this is just immense fun to play with. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm kind of a newbie when it comes to machines, so if there's anything I'm missing, any kind of blatant uh, omissions, let me know. Uh, but until next time, I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope you guys have a great week. Talk to you soon.